We need a collective investment to relaunch a political process. The urgency is the humanitarian support and release of hostages, but we need a relaunch of the political process for the two-state solution. And I think that uh, we have to discuss about uh, how we can put this into practice. Maybe a conference can be a useful step to gather international initiative and direct our collective efforts towards this end. I can assure you, my dear Norwegian Minister, my dear Prime Minister, that we will continue at the European Union level to invest all our efforts in support of these objectives. And I hope that this meeting today will mark another important contribution by the international community to move closer to a solution to a devastating and unsustainable situation in Gaza on the whole Palestinian territories and also affecting positively Israel and the whole region. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. And uh, let me start by thanking Norway and the European Union for taking the initiative and inviting uh, our international partners to meet here at the EU offices in Brussels to host this very important meeting that comes at a very critical and important time. Important time because it also comes at the same week when three European countries made very, very important, courageous decisions to recognize the state of Palestine. And it comes only a week after 143 other countries voted in the United Nations General Assembly to say that Palestine is ready for statehood and it's time to recognize Palestine. But the meeting is also important for another reason. It's important because what's, what's happening in Gaza and the West Bank on the ground. Gaza has been going through very difficult, very alarming situation with the humanitarian losses what we see increasing every day, but also the physical damages that will make our job of rebuilding much more demanding. Having said all of that, we're still hopeful as Palestinians that uh, many decades of struggle and working towards independence are coming closer than ever before. These efforts, these announcements, these meetings are key building blocks towards making Palestine independent, sovereign, viable state a reality. So in this context, we see the meeting today as a very important opportunity for us as a government, a new government, to present with our international partners with the outlines of our priorities and plans for the coming period and also an opportunity to thank them all for the support they have done, extended to our people over the years. In terms of our priorities, we will be informing the, the, don the international partners meeting that we are primarily focusing on three other key priority areas in addition to, of course, the political track. The first priority is to support our people in Gaza. They need every support we can. And I think the best support we can all do for them is to speed up the ceasefire. Every day represents a major loss of human lives and properties and hope for our people. So we want to see a ceasefire taking place very quickly. And we want to be prepared as a government to do the necessary job of taking care of our people in the, the, the first opportunity we have in terms of providing humanitarian help, in terms of restoring basic services, in terms of rebuilding the institutions of the Palestinian Authority in Gaza, reintegrate them with our institutions in the West Bank, and start building the initial steps for economic recovery 
and hopefully a better, provide a better life for our people in Gaza. The second priority our government is working on is to reform and build better institutions that are capable of meeting the expectations of our citizens, improve our efficiency of providing these services, make them more efficient and less costly, but also make them more transparent and sustainable. We are going to work on implementing an agenda that we have developed over the last few weeks to turn around things in Palestine so that we not only get closer to our people, not only be able to provide services in a better fashion, but also build the institutions of the state that we all want to see realized on the ground as soon as possible. And institutions are key for good governance and for viable states. And the third priority for the government is to stabilize the financial and economic situation on the ground. Things have been very difficult in this area too. Uh, not only because of the war, before that, the continuing occupation, restrictions of movement and access, which you referred to, uh, Mr. Borrell, and the siege on Gaza, uh, but also in the last few months, an increased pressure on the finances of the Palestinian Authority because of the decisions by the Israeli government to withhold significant resources that are important to us as a government to continue to provide services for our citizens. This is a very unfortunate situation. This is not going to be helpful. As you indicated, the Palestinian leadership have made every effort to keep the peace and the calm in the West Bank, despite all challenges. We do want anyone, including Israel, to undermine our efforts. So it's an opportunity to ask Israel to reconsider and stop these actions and release our money immediately. And I also going to ask the international partners to, in this meeting, to do the same and request the immediate release of our money so that we can continue to provide the services to our people and to ensure that we will be ready to reform our institutions and be ready to, ho to help our people in Gaza and hopefully together sustain our efforts towards statehood and peace for the region.